Hey guys, Matt. Uh, gonna do maybe one or two more videos on the tabernacle. And today and tomorrow, I just want to talk about the materials because there is uh, so much going on in the materials and some might not know it. I didn't really know all of the things, and I, I probably still don't know them all, but uh, how important these materials were and how everything means something. Every color means something. Every material that, that they used meant something. And it's just exciting how this, this tent in the middle of the desert 3,500 years ago totally points to Jesus Christ. And it's, it's very much for us um, to study and to know. In fact, you know, when, when you read the Old Testament, Deuteronomy, which is just a kind of a restatement of the law, Moses preaching back to the people, and Leviticus, which is all the, the laws and regulations, and, and, and Numbers, which is mostly a story of failure, right? The Jews' rebellion. and um, These things can be difficult to read unless we read them through the prism of Jesus Christ, through, through, through the filter of Jesus Christ. And when we learn all the things that are going on, it makes the Old Testament, for me anyways, just come alive. And it's been exciting for me. And I want to talk about that today. just want to talk about the colors uh, of, of the, the veil and then, and then the materials of the actual tent of the tabernacle because there's a lot going on there. So real quick, when the Jews would walk up to the tabernacle, they'd see a 15-foot high wall, right? And they would walk through through one door. There was one way into the tabernacle, and then there was one way into the holy place, and there was only one way into the holy of holies, right? And that, of course, symbolizes that there's one way to God. That is through Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life, right? No one gets to the Father except through Him. That's what the door represents. That's what the, the curtain represents. And the curtain was made of three colors. And these three colors are blue, red, and purple. Well, the blue symbolizes perfection. Jesus Christ, although he was tempted, he never sinned. He kept the perfect law. Remember, in the, in the ark was the Ten Commandments, among a couple other things. And th that was representing the Jews' failure. They couldn't keep the law. Well, here Jesus, he was perfect. So the blue represents perfection. The red represents the blood of Christ shed once and for all for sins, right? And the, the purple represents the kingship of Jesus Christ. The fact that he left his heavenly place and although he was in the form of God, the very morphe of God, right? He didn't think that a, that a, a, a God, he didn't think equality with God a thing to be grasped. He let it go, Philippians 2, 6 says. And he took on the form or the morphe of a man. But then he went back. Then he rose again. He defeated death. That purple represents the kingship of Jesus Christ. So you got the, the perfection, the blood, and Jesus Christ as king. And those colors and that veil represent the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's amazing. That's beautiful. So you would go through the veil to enter into the outer court first, right? And remember, there was the, the bronze altar for burnt offerings that the Jews would do when they would sin. And then next was the bronze wash basin, right? And we talked about that, how, how those will be in the, in the, in the uh, heavenly tabernacle when we, when we go home to be with our Lord. And those were made of bronze, by the way. As you progress to get closer to God, to get closer to the holy place, the materials will get more precious. You go from bronze to gold. The light goes from natural light in the outer court to man-made light in the holy place to the Shekinah glory of God in the holy of holies. That's beautiful. There's this progression. As we get closer to God, there has to be the perfection of holiness. And that's only possible through Jesus Christ. Okay, so inside, if, if a person were to enter this tent, this tabernacle, you would look up and you would see perfect, clean, white linen. Uh, and that represents the righteousness of Christ, right? So there would be the white linen, um, and then there would be the veil colors, the, the, the linen that had the purple, the blue, and the red. And that represents the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then on top of that would be bulls, 
bull skin and ram skin. Actually, uh, I think it might it actually goat skin and ram skin, and it was dyed blood. That symbolized uh, the the blood that needed to be sacrificed for sins, right? The the, the shed blood. So the white linen, the three colored linen representing the gospel, the goat skin and the ram skin representing the shed blood, and then on top of that there would be badger skin. So in other words, if you were to be outside looking at it, you would look and you would see badger skin. And this is this is really important, uh, and it's something that I didn't pick up on before, because the badger was an unclean animal. And uh, in fact, the tabernacle from the outside, if you didn't see the gold and, and or the bronze in the in the outer court, if you were just looking at it from the side, it probably won't look like much. But you know what? That symbolizes Jesus Christ and the fact that when he took the morphe of a man, he didn't look like much. Uh, he wasn't six foot two, blue blue eyes and, and blonde hair, or dark curly hair or whatever. And yeah, he was just an average looking man. It says that in, in uh, Isaiah 50, 53, verse 2, part B, he says, He had no form or majesty that we should look at him. And no beauty that we should desire him. That's why Judas needed to, to uh, pick him out with a kiss in the Garden of Gethsemane. Because Jesus Christ looked like any other man. Although he was God, he was still man. To the eye, you would just see a man. So that's what that outer shell of, of the badger skin represents. Uh, and I think that's interesting. I think it's interesting how every material points to something and it all in the end points to Jesus the Christ the high priest the priest from the line of Melchizedek the priest who never dies the priest who is a king and a priest it all points to him it's all about Jesus um, so that's the materials and tomorrow we're going to talk about the the framework which is really exciting we're going to get into the gold colored wood covered wood and and what that means so uh, we'll do that. We'll do that tomorrow. Thanks, guys.